a thread by Soul War. There was one terror attack in the last 100 years that came close to achieving the terrorist's goal. Terrorism defined. Noun. The unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians, in the pursuit of political aims. Which terror attack was it? Which attack on America came closest to altering the voted for course of our ship of state? Was it this one? The Oklahoma City bombing? No, that changed nothing political. Those directly responsible were caught and punished. Okay, was it this one? The Boston Marathon bombing? No. This changed nothing regarding how America governs itself and handles its affairs at all. 99% of Americans have no idea which terror attack I'm referring to. Okay, okay, okay. It's got to be this one. Am I right? The Las Vegas massacre? No. The mass shooting shitbags motives were definitely unlawful and evil, but were not political. It didn't come close to changing how we live and govern ourselves. Damn it. Okay. It's gotta be this one, okay? This one changed how we govern ourselves, right? No. 9-11 started our endless wars that the usual suspects thought would do to us what the Russo-Afghan war did to the Soviet Union, but 95% of Americans were untouched. Despite a bombardment from the mainstream media, to make you think massive changes occurred after every terror attack or mass shooting event, none of these atrocities and crimes changed how we live or govern ourselves. Only one came close, too close, to changing everything. What was it? This one. The Alexandria baseball shooting. Okay, what? Wait just a damn minute. Are you trolling us? Only the shooter died. Yes, only he died in a carefully planned but poorly executed terror attack that almost changed American history. Hodgkinson, the shooter, was a very angry and determined terrorist. What he tried to do, had he been successful, would have changed America's course and history. Overnight, he failed. Only he died, and since the would-be massacre was done by a rabid leftist, the mainstream media quickly buried the story. June 14th, 2017. Trump had been in office five months with what Hodgkinson considered a triple threat to the America he wanted, the executive office, Senate, and Congress, all with a GOP majority. Hodgkinson decided to change that via a carefully planned loss of life event. James T. Hodgkinson was 66 years old the day he walked onto Simpson Field <clears throat> to commit mass murder of enough GOP senators to flip the Senate to Democrat control. He had studied the U.S. Constitution and U.S. government carefully and realized the Senate majority was six senators. If those senators were to die, the U.S. would have to hold special elections to replace the deceased senators, and some of those empty seats would flip blue. Hodgkinson determined he would be a righteous avenger to set things right, and he intended to kill a lot more than just six. The day before the shooting, a member of the GOP team noticed Hodgkinson watching them from the bleachers. Earlier, he'd asked someone who was practicing, I think it's the congressional baseball team. Senators and Congress people from both parties participate and attend with families. He was studying and casing Simpson Field for the attack. He had purchased a Century Arms SKS rifle and a Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol, pistol and had over 200 rounds of ammo in his van. He would have, a, he would have two 40-round mags of 7.62 by 39mm 80 rounds and two 8-round mags of 9mm with him during this time. 
He clearly intended to kill as many GOP as he could, but his goal was to murder GOP senators. I'm not sure how many of the team were senators as opposed to being in Congress, but a fair number were senators. If he bagged at least 10 of them, he'd probably change American history. This was also clearly an act of pure rage. Hodgkinson was a virulent Bernie bro. This is another reason the MSM buried this story as fast as possible. He was going to use murder to offset the will of the American people, a vile and detestable act akin to John Wilkes Booth. He only practiced with his rifle and pistol a handful of times. This is key. Hodgkinson only familiarized himself with his weapons, i.e. being able to fire and reload them. No attempt to gain proficiency. And this thankfully doomed the attempt. Carefully planned, terrible shot. He fired 70 rounds at people during his attack. 62 via rifle and 8 via pistol before being shot to death by officers, some of whom he'd wounded, reluctantly returned fire as he'd ignored their pleas to surrender. He was killed trying to reload his pistol. He wounded four people. Representative Steve Scalise from Louisiana, Louisiana, critically wounded. Matt Mika, lobbyist, critically wounded. Zach Barth, GOP staffer, shot in the leg. Capitol Police Special Agent Crystal Griner shot in the ankle, and two others injured in the scramble for cover. Thank heaven Hodgkinson believed his weapons would do his killing for them. He literally believed being able to fire and reload would be enough to do significant damage. He was living in a TV fantasy that only shattered on the field in Alexandria when he died for nothing. Bernie bros have a history of violence. They are now revealed as having ties to Antifa. Hell, the vast majority of Antifa are Bernie bros. Remember Kyle Jurek, field organizer, Sand Sanders campaign on Project Veritas? Bernie doesn't win the nomination. Milwaukee's going to effing burn. So now, there's been a clearly politically motivated murder in Portland. People are now asking, hey, why was there no interest in that lunatic that nearly murdered Steve Scalise a few years back. Hodgkinson was a harbinger. Scalise knows this. August 24th, Representative Scalise tweets about Nancy Pelosi. Disgusting, Nancy Pelosi just called Republicans domestic enemies. I was shot because of this kind of unhinged rhetoric. Where's the media outrage? Scalise isn't having it, and I 1,000% agree. The Democrats are the ones who launched this insurrection once their mad gambit to unseat Trump failed via impeachment and a deliberate pandemic. They have now set the stage for a hundred Hodgkinsons to murder us to unseat President Trump. He really isn't having it. Representative Scalise tweets, these are the images the left, the media, and Joe Biden don't want you to see. They want to silence anyone who exposes the violence and destruction they've been labeling as peaceful protests for months. Retweet so everyone can see. I agree with Brendan Dilley, Carlos Osuita, and Brian Cates that to engage these people right now is like a lone cowboy trying to stop a stampede of 500 angry cattle with a revolver. I posted about it, and I meant every fucking word. Now, someone's dead. Carlos is exactly correct. The shooter will walk away scot-free. If you seek these head-hunting savages, the best you can now hope for is a prison sentence if you live. If it goes against you, you're dead, and they walk. Did I say life was fair? No. Use your goddamn brains, Carlos Asuita tweeted from an earlier thread. Here's what's going to happen. The guy will plead self-defense, and the Portland jury will acquit him. Sound familiar? 
What was accomplished? Four people dead and Trump was damaged. Go ahead with your dance of death. The rest of us will win this war. The state will be against you. The city will be against you. The mayor will be against you. The police will be against you. The DA will be against you. All deep blue, all day long. They are empowering these lunatics, practically handing them the gun. Oh, it's just so wrong. I'm right there with Carlos. Why? Why, in the name of God, can't some people grasp this? This is a diabolical movement of Marxist demons that have been unleashed, and people are determined to confront them. These ghouls will ambush murder and do it faster than you can say unfair. The guns are out. Antifa is delighted and energized by that man's murder. Morale high. This man chose to be there. He's kitted out for a street ball. A street brawl with demons. So some Antifa goons, pissed off from being unable to stop or sufficiently attack the Trump caravan, decided to murder a member of Patriot Prayer to make themselves feel better. When you confront these hyper-violent mobs, you are doing exactly what the Democrats want. They set this stage they need Trump supporters confronting Antifa so the mainstream media can frame every injury, death, as more chaos Trump is causing in hashtag Trump's America. You are going to be inundated with that hashtag until November 3rd. People are already dead as the mainstream media goes cheerily to work. If at all humanly possible, stay away from them. We are two months out from the election. Confronting them is not only stupid and dangerous, it harms Trump's presidency and chance for re-election, which is, of course, exactly why the left is doing this. I mean what I've said. 500 angry steers stampeding and one very soon to be dead cowboy standing in their way. Get the hell out of their way. By the way, Mr. Dead Cowboy, they were headed over a cliff. On November 4th, we can have a beer and a steak as a re-elected President Trump unleashes a voter mandate-approved hell on these soulless ghouls who've sown so much chaos in our midst. You are being wound up to think that you have to do something now. How about no? Up your game, America. Understand this. About half of the tweets in this and other timelines covering this killing in Portland are going to be from foreign operatives posing as Americans. They want the chaos to be a man, make a stand. We got to do something. Yes, we will do something smart and utterly devastating to the left far more damaging and long-lasting than wanting to confront primordial savages who have been given the green light to ambush and murder you. President Trump's second term is the end for them, and they know it. We can't recover Aaron Danielson. He's gone. He's going to miss everything that's to come. We can make sure the vile insurrection the left has fomented doesn't flourish and soon joins him in the grave. That's one way we can honor his sacrifice. Another is by not placing ourselves in danger where we might have to kill or be killed in a useless pissing contest with lunatics who have proven time and again they are not rational and are not living as civilized human beings. We still have just enough time to fuck this up. The Democrats are going to be pushing, pushing, pushing hard to try and cause death and destruction for the next two months, to trick Americans into thinking confronting a stampede of destruction is necessary. Let me clear that up. It isn't. Trump will rebuild all of it. He stated he's going to assist in rebuilding lost business while at the same time he refused federal assistance to the state governments that allowed their cities to burn. 
he will succor businesses and deny the Democrat mayors and governors federal money. Perfect. Just like the pandemic that the Chinese Communist Party attacked us with, Trump is willing to spend trillions and even shut down the economy to save lives until we knew what we were dealing with. He can replace businesses and rebuild the economy. He can't bring people back to life. Do you understand? Stay out of it. We can rebuild. We can't raise you from the dead. As Democrats push, push, push. Get out there. Stand up. Don't be a puss. Now, now, now. Go, go, go. Don't be a sap. It's a trap. Every violent confrontation helps them. Chaos is their coin. Keep your head. Stay sane and patient. Wait for November and then vote with a fiery vengeance to give this Democrat behemoth its mortal wound. Yes, there will be a short period, a short period of tumult afterwards as we watch the unleashed DOJ crush Antifa while we laugh and barbecue. You will get to watch the dual realities the left created over decades finish their polarizing break just in time for their reality to begin to collapse in a failure cascade that will amaze and delight you. It will be biblical, Ten Commandments type stuff. Watch the Democrats and MAGA Pied Pipers over the next 60 days as they try to push or trick you into the streets. Don't do it. My battlefield is the voting booth on November 3rd. Trump has things positioned for a Trump slide. The Dems are powerless to stop him. Only we can F this up. So how about we don't do that, Mkai? Expect real fireworks in October as the Democrats go full insaniac in the face of their devastating defeat. Again, stay calm. Trump's anticipated all of this. Okay, maybe not the pandemic. And will clean their clocks as usual. The left and their fake news media has created thousands of lunatics that the Democrat governors and mayors have now enabled to run wild throw in thousands more opportunistic criminals, and it's a perfect storm to create chaos and death, all to blame Trump. He's not even worried. He's going to rebuild businesses and lives, but you have to be alive for him to help. If you go into this storm, you are participating in it. Bad idea. Let Trump, Barr, and Esper work. They've got this, fam. This is the tumult before the demon flees the house. All will be well. To support Brent Cates' works, donate any amount here. PayPal.me slash Brent Cates. Thanks for listening, and remember...